<laughs> wow, look! They're everywhere. High school girls so young and cute! <laughs> this is heaven. <sighs> Should I really have brought him here? <laughs> Yuma, you really came! I was nervous throughout my classes, thinking you might have stood me up. I wouldn't ditch you like that. I'll see the job you requested of me to the very end. I knew I could count on a master detective. Um, about that... Listen, the truth is... Wait, Yuma. Something's wrong. There's a suspicious person over there. Oh, that's my senior. Or a friend, I guess. Huh? Is he also a master detective? He's not what I expected. Why is he staring at the other students? Um, he's preparing to use his forte, I think? Huh? Oh, what's up? Are you talking about me? You must be Kurumi. I heard all about you from Yuma. I'm the superstar detective Desuhiko Thunderbolt. Woo! <laughs> nice to meet you. Sure. Now about the details of the job. If possible, I'd like to see where it happened in person. Do you think we can get inside? So you're starting the investigation. It may be hard for an outsider to get in the school. Even family members can't enter without a teacher's permission. Wow, looks like you're in trouble already. But I've come fully prepared to save my lost little kittens. Just watch. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Whoop. You come too. Me too? Huh? <laughs> Don't worry about it. What Just let me handle it. Oh. I'll be gentle. Hey. Superstar Detective Desuhiko. Huh? So the cute girl next to you is... Yuma? Oh, why me? Are you really the same people? You didn't just switch out with someone? Kurumi, if someone talks to you on your way home, don't follow them, okay? Huh? Just kidding. <laughs> this is my forte. Disguise. I seared the image of this lady teacher into my mind as I passed her by earlier. That's amazing! So this is the forte of a master detective! I know, right? Isn't my voice just irresistible? <laughs> I'll let you be my fan. If you join the after party, I'll even whisper in your ear if you want. Yuma, you're so cute! Now we'll just look like friends when we're together. Uh, yeah. Hey! Get away from me! I don't want some flat-chested uggo as a friend! We should be good now. Let's go inside. Yeah, like an undercover investigation. Be sure to go straight home. jumped off the roof of this school building. Why don't we go up there to look? How about we visit the theater club first? We're about to do a rehearsal on the school stage right now. 
This school even has its own theater, huh? That's right. If we go there, you can see what it's like at the club I go attended. Let's take a look while we still can. You take care of that. I'll go check another spot. Another spot? You're not coming with us? I stand out when I carry the backpack. I need to hide it someplace safe first. Don't worry about me and, uh, do what you gotta do. <laughs> I've set up your shot so you better not miss. See you later, my man. I think he's misunderstanding something. Is it really okay for him to go off on his own? Let's go, Yuma. Oh, wait. Do you have a girl name now? Y Yuma's fine. It's very proper, like a real theater. Right? The whole school gives a lot of attention to the theater club. There are four performances throughout the year, and people outside of the school sometimes come to watch. Kane Ward doesn't have many options for entertainment, so our school's theater is very popular. That's why the battle to be the main lead is so intense. The star of the theater club becomes the star of Kane Ward. So it's seen as much more than a club activity. Yes, this isn't just a single page of our youth. Everyone's competing as if their lives depend on it. A lot of them come from affluent or powerful families and take pride in being members of the elite. Sounds like everyone's always on edge. They're very graceful and don't show their true feelings while on stage, though. Shall we go in?
Everyone's so busy, they didn't even notice us coming in without permission. This is the stage rehearsal, after all. It's treated like the main performance itself. They leave the curtains open and allow people to watch. More students should show up to watch shortly. I'm not used to this atmosphere. It makes me nervous. <laughs> Why are you getting nervous when you won't even be on stage? We're only here to find out the truth behind Aiko's death. Let's search carefully. Wait, that's no way to talk to a master detective. Sorry, I'm starting to talk to you like any other friend. It's all right. It helps me blend in. Huh? So it's all right to be friendlier? I'll go all out if you don't mind. Uh, sure. <sighs> I wish you were dead. I wish you'd die in a lake with your feet sticking out. Oh, Yuma. All four of them are here together right now. All four? What do you mean? The four members of the theater club that I think have something to do with Aiko's death. See? They're on stage right now. The two in costumes are the main leads this time. The blonde, high-class-looking girl on the right is Karen. The impish-looking one on the left is the other protagonist, Waruna. Below the stage is the honor student, Yoshiko. The one keeping a low profile in the Windbreaker is Kurene. You think those four are suspicious? Why? Of my reasons. Look at Cotton, the classy one. Her beauty is unbelievable for a high schooler. The moment Aiko was gone, she had no problem climbing to the top. She has a strong fervor for acting and seems to have no interest in making friends with others. I suppose you could say she's the uncooperative type who only thinks about herself. Her father has a lot of influence in real estate, so he applies lots of pressure too. So you think that's why she took down Aiko to become the main lead? I hate to say it, but I think it's possible. It's true that this Cotton does have an extraordinary grace to her. I think that dour look on her face reveals her inner thoughts. Am I really walking down the right path? Did I wind up somewhere I'm not meant to be? I can almost hear her thinking that. In some ways, she's a lot like me. Huh? How are you alike? You sure don't look classy yourself. I'll ignore that. The other lead, Waruna, is the kind that only does what she wants on her own terms. But she can play any role like she's a true genius. She's still rough around the edges according to critics, but she doesn't seem to care about what others think of her. Why do you suspect her? She's the kind who doesn't hold back when it comes to getting what she wants and doesn't care what anyone thinks. As you can imagine, she's always putting heads with someone. Lorna would never admit defeat, ever. That's why everyone else is afraid of her, and she only talks to a few girls who follow her around. If someone with that kind of pushy personality got into an argument with Aiko... You're saying it's not out of character for her to take more drastic measures. It's a bit of a stretch, but considering how she did become one of the main leads... 
She could be considered suspicious. That's Yoshiko below the stage. She's an actress, but she's managing the stagehands as production assistant this time. Everyone is talking about how Kaden will be the next big star. But within the theater club, Yoshiko is more popular by an overwhelming degree. She prioritizes the team over the individual. She's a kind, mild-mannered honor student. The only reason the theater club is able to function is thanks to her leadership. And you think someone like her could have killed Aiko? I don't personally suspect her that much, but... Aiko used to be the club's leader. After she died, Yoshiko picked up right where she left off. I believe she's the only one who could ever take over Aiko's role. So Yoshiko maybe felt Aiko had what she thought was rightfully hers. But would she resort to murder to change that? I don't want to believe she would, but I can't say it's impossible. Kurane, the one in the wings wearing the Windbreaker, manages the light since she wasn't chosen for a lead role. But when it comes to pure acting ability, she's one of the best. I guess you could say her acting method is distinct, like she's the only one who can do what she does. She's kind of gloomy. Or it's more like no one really knows what she's thinking. She's often alone in class too. Do you think she's also a suspect? She always aims for the lead role. Besides, who knows what she's thinking? So you're saying maybe she actually despised Aiko and tried to take out her competition? Maybe. It's why I consider her another suspect. I see. All right then. The main leads are Karen and Waruna. There's also Yoshiko, the group leader, and Kurane, the distinctive one. And in your eyes, Kurumi, you find them all suspicious? I'm sure they'd be mad if they heard me, but yes, I do. Though the four of them are rivals, they weren't particularly hostile to each other before. However, after Aiko passed away, they started fighting for the main role. They all rarely speak to each other now. That's intense. It's true that it does seem suspicious. So did you gather all that information yourself, Kurumi? To tell you the truth, I joined the theater club after Aiko's death in hopes of finding out what really happened. You're really determined, huh? I am. I won't give up until I discover the truth behind Aiko's death. She must have been devastated by the loss of her friend. But she still found a way to push herself forward. All this to find the truth. I see. Sometimes the truth can be a goal that helps you press onward. Then I need to do what I can to help her. I have to find the truth behind this case. On the other hand, some truths make you want to die when you discover them. Be quiet. Besides, even if that were the case, if I let the truth be buried like this, more bad things could happen. That's why I'm going to help her find the truth. It's my duty as a detective. Will you stop confusing detectives with heroes? Regardless, I have nothing to do with this, so whatever. For someone who has nothing to do with it, you sure have some strong opinions. Huh. Hey, Kurumi! You came at the right time! We're short-handed right now. We could use some help in the wings. You mind lending a hand? Huh? But I'm... Oh, don't mind me. I'll watch the stage from here. Then I'll go help. Let's meet back here once I'm done. Who's 
the cutie? A classmate? Yeah. Something like that. Where have you been hiding such a cute girl? Why don't you invite her to the theater club? R right. <laughs> Looks like it's about to begin. She said this would be just like the actual performance. I wonder what it's like. Hello, everyone! Thank you for coming by after school when everything's so busy. Desirico? What is he doing? Before the theater club starts their performance, there's something I want everyone to hear. It's my debut song! I've practiced so much for this big day! Here it goes! Give me the spotlight! Hey! Ugh, he's so dumb. Now, we will begin a Theory Academy's Theater Club rehearsal performance. Why would you do that, Desuhiko? What if they see through your disguise? Oh, come on, man. What's wrong with a little fun? A star always wants to stand on stage. You're kidding me. Even if your disguise is perfect, that was reckless of you. Oh, it's fine to be reckless and my disguise is perfect. Damn, I ruined my chance for an amazing debut. Anyway, the performance is about to start. I knew I would find you here, Natasha. I knew you would come, Anatoly. You have not changed at all in the past ten years. Nay, you have become even more beautiful. You, however, have changed. Your face is scarred and... You look stern. I've longed for the days we spent here together. Back then, the world shone bright in the colors of the rainbow. But now, the only world I see is colored with crimson, draped in the blood of my fallen comrades. Behold, even my own hands are stained red. Yet, you are still pure, unchanged from that day. You really believe I have not changed? In truth, I had no choice in the matter. But because I did change, I chose to remain as I once was. I see. These ten years were long for us both indeed. Within the tall, white walls, a clear fountain and colorful flowers decorated the garden. This garden was the world to these two young girls. They held hands and ran through the sunflower field. They sang to the blue sky and wore white clover crowns they had given one another. The sunset was ever golden. Even the rare rain glittered brightly. The world was perfect. Everything shone like the shimmer in a rainbow. At the very least, that was how it was within these walls. The two sisters, Anatoly and Natasha, were princesses of a 300-year-old kingdom to the far west. Since birth, they had never gone beyond the castle walls. Their youths were spent together alone. Sisters by birth, they had a happy life together. But one day, their peace abruptly ended.
a rebellion struck. The military took the castle and declared the start of a new nation. Royal family members who resisted were executed and their corpses hung in the garden. The castle walls were destroyed and the flowers trampled. Anatoly and Natasha escaped the castle at night thanks to their servants. But amidst the chaos, the two sisters were separated. Their hands brushed against each other. It would be the final time they ever touched. Natasha was hidden in a neighboring small nation. An ally of old, the princess was welcomed with the highest honor. However, Anatoly continued her journey of escape with the remaining members of the royal family. They traveled the frontier to avoid pursuers as they searched for a land of peace. As they continued down this path, their comrades fell one after another. Ten years have passed since. Their performance is so intense in person, I can't take my eyes off the stage. Oh. Oh. Was that Yoshiko? Maybe she went to the restroom. I took up the sword for the first time after I left the castle. It was also the first time I killed. Have you ever witnessed a soldier's dying moments? As blood flows from open wounds, all you'll hear is a death rattle. Men speak proudly of honor and pride, but those vanish when you're on the battlefield. Over the span of 10 years, Natasha was welcomed as the new head of state for a small neighboring nation. She knew full well that her lineage was being taken advantage of for the nation's development. However, she had no choice but to allow this to happen. Meanwhile, Anatoly traveled the land. She had grown to become a leader of the wandering warrior tribes in the region. The sword she had mastered to survive had become the hope for many. The fight to regain their homeland had begun for these two princesses. It all began when the former kingdom, now a military dictatorship, invaded the nation protecting Natasha. Natasha declared war, promising to regain control of her former castle. Seeing an opportunity, Anatoly rallied the people of the land to mount an invasion. They rode for the kingdom, at first, Natasha was disadvantaged, but the balance shifted upon uniting with Anatoly's forces. The enemy commanders saw the forces surrounding the castle. They knew there was no way to escape and quickly surrendered. The war ended in a single day, and yet, People do not know of the 10 years of strife these two girls endured. The royal family was rebuilt, but the peace they had once known was not immediately restored. Natasha's forces desired control over the conquered kingdom. However, Anatoly's camp also sought control 
having achieved many merits in battle. Though the two girls reached out to one another, their hands would never touch again. They were fated to strike each other down. If we continue to fight, more blood will be spilled, weakening our nation. Hence why only one of us shall be queen, and end this war. There is no path before us where we can walk hand in hand, as we did back then. I know. I am prepared for what we must do. It's why I've waited here for you. Draw your sword. We shall now decide who is fit to become queen. Drop the facade, Natasha. For these past ten years, you sat on the throne as a princess. I know you know not how to wield a sword. I refuse to stain my hands with your blood. I could never will myself to kill you. But at this rate, the nation will perish. Draw your sword, Anatoly! Natasha! Sleep the whole time, so it was already dark anyway. Is she talking in her sleep? That was weird. Wait, why am I wasting time thinking about it? The lights are on again. Back to the show. Now, let us eat. Yes. Allow me to pass the plate. Thank you, Anatoly. The two spent time together again, for the first time in years. However, they could not run through the garden like they used to. Together, they carried the lives of tens of thousands on their shoulders. What was expected of the girls was no longer a crown of flowers, but a real crown instead. If I could simply defer the throne to you and end it all, I would have done so in the beginning. A queen's crown would fit you better, Natasha. However, the war would not simply end there. How did it end up this way? What are we supposed to do? Natasha wept in anguish as Anatoly gently embraced her. How wonderful it would be if we could flee somewhere together. But both knew full well that could not be. After a long silence and much internal strife, Natasha rubbed. She knew this could not go on forever for the nation, and for themselves. She invoked her nation's ancient tradition. A new queen would be chosen through a duel of cups and poison. Let us end this, Anatoly. Natasha. What do you intend to do? I leave it for the heavens to decide who will survive.
On the day we were separated, I was given this poison by our family in order to commit suicide. Switch the glasses around until I cannot tell which one has the poison in it. Once you are finished, I will reorder the glasses as well. The duel of poisoned cups. Very well. We shall ask God which of us deserves to survive. Though perhaps it will be the God of Death that answers. Finished. It is my turn then. I am ready. I grant you the right to select a glass. I shall take the remaining one. Very well. Natasha, promise me. If you survive, promise you will bring peace to this kingdom. And be a bit more selfish in your personal life. That would balance things out, I think. I also have something to say, Anatoly. If you survive, wear a dress fit for a queen, no matter how much you hate it. To the new queen. Cheers. So, I think this is real. That, that's a real corpse on the stage? Desuhiko, this is where master detectives come in. We have to do something. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't deal with corpses. Huh? Dead people's faces terrify me. I can't handle looking at them. 
blood. What's with the blood? It's all way too horrifying. <laughs> I can't deal with gory stuff. You're joking, right? You're a master detective. But I'm not assigned to murders. I mainly handle undercover investigations and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll leave this to you. I grant you the right to investigate the crime scene, rookie. <laughs> what? I, 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 I'll use my uh, disguise ability and try to lead the panicking students out of here. I'll leave the rest to you. Karumi. That wasn't an act just now, right? That's not in the script. Cotton really coughed up blood. She, she's really dead. Who could have thought a real murder would happen during a play? First Aiko, and now Cotton? Is the school cursed? Yuma, it's a murder case. But if the peacekeepers come, they'll just cover it up again. Please, I need your help. Please investigate this case, Yuma. You want me to do it? Uh, got it. You're just doing what she says again? Wow, if you want to get on the flat-chested Uggo's good side that badly... Hey, you also want to peek at the crime scene for your own reasons. Mm, busted. Anyway, it'll be trouble when the peacekeepers arrive. Let's search the crime scene before they get here. jobs in the wings. Aside from the theater club members, there wasn't anyone wandering about like an outsider. I mean, other than when Desuhiko jumped in right at the beginning of the play. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that's part of the investigation, right? You can't see everyone from the stage after all. Isn't that why he went up there? So he could memorize all the faces that were there? Right. I think he just wanted attention, but setting that aside, since she didn't see any outsiders, the only persons of interest are those within the theater club. I'll keep that in mind while taking a look around. I've done a few investigations already. I should be able to handle this now. Yet you were hopelessly reliant on yours truly until now. I see it's not your brain making the decisions anymore. <laughs> the eyes are wide open from agony. The body is completely motionless. I can immediately tell she's dead. Though she displayed many expressions while acting, her face is frozen in death in the end. This isn't an act. She was struck by an abrupt and unscripted death. Uh, um... Was it poison? That's most likely the case. There are no external injuries, and given the circumstances, she must have ingested poison. This will be tough to solve if that's the case. I know nothing about poison. What? A detective who doesn't know his poisons? Don't tell me you're a poison virgin! Ew, gross! 
perverted little detective. Get on your knees and apologize, and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. How about something like, I'm sorry, I should know my place. I can't live without you, Shigami. If she was murdered with poison while on stage, the poison must have been prepared somewhere else. I need to look for that while checking out anywhere else that seems suspicious. Hey, don't ignore me, you jerk! Yep, it's a corpse. There are two glasses on the table. The props used for the Duel of Poison's Cups. I think this glass was supposed to be stored upside down on the shelf in the back. Cotton was the victim, but she's also the one who set it on the table. Maybe poison was already applied to the glass beforehand. Hey, do you know who prepared these glasses? Oh, it's the girls on prop duty. The freshmen are handling them this time. Do you know where this glass was before it was placed on stage? Props are kept in the theater club storage. This glass should have been in there too. The theater club storage? In that case, any club member would have access. Um... Was real poison applied to the glass? I just thought it could be possible. But there's the risk of being caught by applying the poison after it was moved to the set. If poison was applied, it would have been before being brought to the set. But on days like this, when there's an open rehearsal, props are brought out of storage right after school. The glass should have stayed on that shelf the whole time. After school... Which means it'd be even harder to apply poison before then. Yes. At the very least, the props in the set were fully prepared at least one hour before the performance. There's a wine bottle on the table. Karin poured the liquid from this bottle and started to suffer after drinking it. Then that means there's a chance the poison was mixed into this bottle. This isn't wine in here, right? Of course not. It's just grape juice. I poured out the bottle and replaced what was inside. Huh? You, Kurumi? After class, I was asked to help out before I went to get you. I'm still a theater club member after all. Were both the wine and grape juice sealed before you swapped them out? Yes. I received the unopened wine bottle from a club member. I uncorked the bottle and poured the wine down the sink. It's a waste, but we can't drink it anyway. After that, I went to the cafeteria and bought a can of grape juice. Of course, this was also unopened. I poured the juice into the bottle, then put the cork back. I passed the bottle to a club member, and my job was done. That bottle was then placed with the glasses on the shelf before the performance. I see. With so many people around, poison couldn't be added to the bottle after it was placed on stage. If poison was mixed in, it'd be before it was brought on stage. This file is supposed to have poison in it, according to the script. But it's empty now. It's dry and shows no signs of ever being wet. To be sure, the poison in this file wasn't real, and it was just another prop, right? Absolutely. It was always empty. The contents spill easily because of the loose lid, so we don't even keep colored water in it. 
Aladdin just pretended to pour poison from the vial into the glass on stage. Then it's hard to imagine there being any poison inside it. for the lead role? If so, those most suspicious are Karin's rivals. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. Is the culprit one of those three? Hmm. I need to find out if there was anything suspicious about them during the performance. Kurumi was in the wings the whole time, so perhaps she knows something about the others. Before the incident occurred, do you know where Yoshiko was and what she was doing? I didn't see Yoshiko in the wings. She may have been watching from the audience. Oh, right. Speaking of which... During the performance, I noticed Yoshiko walking down the aisle. I thought she was coming back from the restroom. But I didn't see her take her seat. What if she wasn't part of the audience? Where could she have been? Kurumi, did you notice anything suspicious about Warna while you were watching from the wings? Hmm... As far as I can tell, Warna was just her usual self. She was listening to music right up to the start of the play. I think that's how she concentrates. Did she go near the glasses or bottle before the performance? I wasn't watching her the entire time, but if she did go near the set, I think I would have noticed. Hmm, I see. Warana was the closest to the victim. That's ample opportunity to commit the crime. But still, how did she add the poison? It couldn't have been during the performance, right? Wait, now that I think about it... Right after the lights went dark in that one scene, she went near the shelf to pick up a plate. Her back was toward the audience, so I couldn't see her hands. But she only had two or three seconds max. Could she have poured hidden poison in the glass in that time? Did she have any other opportunities after? The next time she touched the glasses was during the shuffling scene. But it was Cotton who moved the glasses and bottle. She also prepared the poison vial. And plus, after shuffling, Cotton was the one who chose the first glass. Given the situation, it'd be difficult for Waruna to poison Cotton specifically. What about Kurine? Did she seem strange before the incident occurred? Hmm. I haven't seen Kurene. She was working up above the whole time. Above? Oh, she was managing the lights then. There's a catwalk above to adjust the lights, and that's where Kurene was supposed to be. So I didn't see her in the wings. There's another girl handling the lights, so it would be helpful to speak to her. Before the performance, did you notice anything off about Cotton? Well, I think she was more on edge than usual. She yelled at underclassmen who were late in preparing for the show. She also paced around restlessly. That's not just today. She's been that way since Echo's death. Maybe the whole battle for the lead role had stressed her out. But since she was murdered after Echo, she should be considered another victim, right? If she knew someone was out to get her, then it's not strange for her to be mentally unstable.
the ones fighting for the lead role are Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. None of them seem particularly suspicious so far. Hey, how long are you gonna keep this up? I'm so over playing 20 questions with this ugly chick. That reminds me, the lights went dark during the performance, right? The entire hall was blacked out. Wouldn't it be possible for someone to sneak up on stage and place the poison then? Hmm. I hadn't thought of that, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? The blackout lasted for only five seconds. We measure it each time to ensure there are no mistakes. So someone would have to move through the dark, get on stage, apply the poison, and get away, all in five seconds. That sounds impossible to me. If they were in a hurry, their footsteps would have been heard by everyone, too. From the audience, it may be impossible, but what about from the wings? No, there were multiple club members, including me, in the wings at all times. While the lights are out, we are always on standby to support the actors. If someone went on stage, the other members and I would have noticed. I guess it's not possible, then. <laughs> Even an amateur has more logic than you. I guess you're useless without a certain someone. So these don't suit my palette. There's no point in going that way. She mentioned that the catwalk for adjusting the lights is up above. Are those the stairs to reach them? Would you like to go check up there? Yeah, I would. The spotlights for the stage are set over there. It's a lot narrower than I thought. It's pretty high up. Yeah. It'd be hard on anyone with the fear of heights. So you can move the lights as needed for the play. The table is directly below. Which means... You can't see the glasses getting shuffled from the audience seats. But they could have been visible from up here. I could find out for sure if I could talk to someone that was up here. There's a script on the floor. That's the script of the play. Someone must have dropped it in all the chaos. The script describes the duel of poisoned cup scene. The character Natasha, played by Cotton, is supposed to take the wine and glasses from the shelf. After that, the glasses are shuffled on stage. According to the script, takes the first glass, and they both drink at the same time. Unfortunately, Cotton's glass turned out to actually be poisoned. Kurumi, I was wondering about this script. It says, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Why is that? It's to make the result feel unpredictable to the audience. If the glasses are visible, no matter how fast they are shuffled, the audience can see which one has the poison. The script doesn't say anything about how many times to shuffle the glasses, or which one will have the poison in it. Exactly. 
there's no poison to begin with, so it doesn't matter which one's picked. You just pick any glass and act out your death after drinking. In the script, Hodden was to die. But... I didn't think she'd actually die. I see. Since the instructions aren't precise, both actresses don't know the results from shuffling either. checked all that I can for now. I have a good idea of how things work around here. It seems certain Cotton died from drinking poison, but I couldn't find any clues that point to how it was done. Oh, stuck already, Mr. Pervert Detective? If you need my adorable angel's whisper to help, maybe you should get on your knees and beg. What, Angel? You're a death god. <sighs> I shouldn't even pay attention to her. But she's right. I'm stuck. What should I do? Yuma, if you're done with the crime scene investigation, are you conducting the questioning next? Questioning? Aren't you going to talk to Yoshiko, Maruna, Kurene, and the others? Oh. Oh! Right! Let's go and talk to them. <laughs> She's such a loudmouth. But how do we talk to them? I doubt they'll be too willing to share anything with me. I joined the club only recently, so they don't trust me. And you're a complete outsider, Yuma. Even though you're disguised as a cute girl right now. That's it! A disguise! Maybe this could work if we use Desuhiko's disguise. He could disguise as any of the girls and start questioning them. I am the Amaterasu Peacekeeper's Vice Director, the trusted right hand, showered with love by Director Yomi himself. Martina Electra. Uh, uh, uh. Goodness me, you've surely done something reckless this time around. Whoops, looks like she found out you snuck into a girl's school. I think this deserves the death penalty, don't you? Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed this way. What are you doing? Hurry up and make the arrest. Wait, I can explain! Huh? What? You have no right to remain silent. You have no right to talk to a lawyer, either. You only possess two rights. Confess the truth, and beg Amaterasu Corporation for mercy. Take her away. Hey! What's going on? Um, please, wait! Are you sure you want to try and stop Amaterasu Peacekeeper Vice Director Martina? Yeah, tell me, why are you taking Kurumi? To arrest her, naturally. On the suspicion of murdering Karen. Huh? What? Why would I do that? We have reached this conclusion following an interrogation of a person of interest. According to them, you were responsible for handling the contents of the wine bottle prior to the start of the play. It's clear you took the opportunity to pour poison inside it. It was only grape juice! I didn't add any poison! 
Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. <laughs> oh, it appears my deduction was correct. The poison, hmm. It seems to have been a particularly potent one. The label warns that even a small amount ingested can result in death. The bottle is unsealed, and some of the liquid is missing. There's no mistake. You secretly stole this from the chemistry lab and used it for murder, didn't you? I don't know anything about it! That bottle is way too big to be stolen without anyone noticing. What a worthless comment. One could simply unseal it in the chemistry lab and put the substance in a smaller container to take wherever desired. Which could then be directly poured into the lime bottle. If you're gonna pick a fight, you better have some logic backing you up. This is the last time I'll do this for you. Hmm, there's a warning on the bottle. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Huh? After 30 minutes, it becomes harmless? If you think that's important, go for broke and try pointing it out. Um... I'm curious about what's written on the bottle's warning label. Warning label? This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. It has been 30 minutes since the murder occurred. If this chemical was unsealed at the time of the crime, it will have already lost its potency. Let us check. Nothing. It seems likely that this poison was used as the murder weapon. Which means the crime was possible only for someone at the school with access to the chemistry lab. However, this fact does not contradict her being the killer. Wait, no! I am well aware that many of Etheria Academy's students are children of those affiliated with Amaterasu Corporation. However, that cannot be used as an excuse to bend the truth. Criminals must be punished as criminals. <laughs> For that is justice. Now be gone. Any additional interference and you'll be arrested as well. Take her away, and dispose of the corpse on stage before it rots. Corpses spoil so quickly due to the rain and humidity in this town. Why? There must be a mistake! It wasn't me! That's right, she's not the killer! Please, listen to me! I warned you not to interfere any further. She swapped out the contents of the bottle before the play began. And the incident occurred more than 30 minutes into the play. If the chemical use in the crime becomes harmless after 30 minutes, then it's impossible for her to be the culprit. I see. How logical and beautiful. There is beauty in being logical with all things, much like the golden ratio. Like gazing upon a flawless art piece, and the more delicate it appears, the more excited I become envisioning the moment I pulverize it! Huh? Logic is meaningless in the face of ultimate power! It is nothing but a glass ornament beneath an iron hammer! Uh, no! 
God, I'm so excited. What's with her? I guess all the Peacekeeper higher-ups are perverts without exception. No, my soft and fragile-looking student. Your play-acting as a detective is over. Play-acting? If you intend to continue interfering with our justice, then you will be pulverized. Help me, Yuma! Hmm? Yuma? I've heard that name somewhere. No, never mind. I don't know a little girl like you. Play acting as a detective? She's right. What am I doing? I've mistaken detectives for superheroes. Justice is a matter of opinion. With enough conviction, anything can be considered justice. It's only an assumption, completely worthless and completely powerless. Hey, I told you all students must wait on the lower level. Stop wandering around and go join the others. <sighs> Kurumi was taken away. What should I do? Do I just walk away as if nothing happened? No, oh, I can't do that. Kurumi believed in me. She said the detectives are heroes. I'm no hero, but I'm the only one who can save her right now. I have to do something. <laughs> The truth is still hidden. To discover the truth behind this case, and to find out who the real killer is, I need Desuhiko's help. I need his disguise ability to get information from the club members.